Good morning. Today is day seven on our journey through the Gospel of John, and today's reading is John 3, verses 22 through 36. This morning's text returns us to John the Baptist, and John was continuing to preach repentance and baptism, pointing people to the coming Messiah, the Christ, who was Jesus. Jesus as well, he was in a different location, was also calling people to repent and through his disciples continuing John's baptism of repentance. The Jews began arguing at this point with John the Baptist's disciples and the Jewish leaders objected to this baptism or were trying to find a way to shut down John's ministry. John's disciples seemed concerned learning that Jesus was also baptizing and was drawing large crowds perhaps larger than John the Baptist. John, however, wasn't bothered by this at all. He would not allow envy or comparison to make him forget his mission, to announce that the Messiah had come, and then to step back and let the attention to be focused upon Jesus, the Christ. And so he reminds his disciples and the Jews who were there at the time that everything he did, all that he had, this ministry was a gift from God and should be received as such. He goes on to remind them again that he is not the Christ, but the one who sent him from above. Sometimes we forget who we are and who Jesus is. We get tunnel vision and John's disciples did that that day. He reminds them that he knows his proper place, preaching the coming of the Christ. He likens his role to that of the friend of the bridegroom who arranges all the details of the wedding and brings the bride to her groom. The friend of the bridegroom is never the focus. It's never the focus of the attention, but helps to shine the light on the bride and the groom. And perhaps John's disciples were concerned that Jesus was outshining John, but John continues to remind him that that is joyful, that his joy comes from seeing people, seeing Christ and believing in who he is. In ministry, it's easy to get caught up in what we're doing and who is seeing it and what are the results. And both in my work as a missionary and in church ministry, there are always these annual statistical reports to be completed that assess the work and the success of the work. It's often measured in numbers, finances, numbers of professions of faith or baptisms, among other things. Those things are ministry. But when we get caught up in the numbers and the work and compare ourselves to what other people are doing, we lose sight of the big picture. And it seems that that's what's happening with John's disciples. Even though Jesus was baptizing men into repentance and drawing large crowds, John understood that they did not have the same ministry, the same role. Jesus was uniquely the Messiah and his work must continually be exalted. John the Baptist teaches us that we may be popular and outwardly successful and still be humble. John the Baptist had fame and crowds, yet he was an example of genuine humility. John the Baptist also did not quit his work just because Jesus was doing a similar work and doing it for more people. He labored on, content to do the unique work that God had called him to. And so he goes on in this chapter declaring who Jesus is, the one who has come from heaven, who speaks the word of God and is God, the one who is filled with the spirit of God, and that whoever believes in the son has eternal life. Whoever the re rejects the Son will not see life and will be judged. To reject the Son is to reject his gift, eternal life. It's a package deal, John tells us. You cannot accept the gift while rejecting the giver. We can learn so much from John the Baptist. He is the consummate evangelist. Whatever is brought to him, he turns into an opportunity to proclaim the gospel message. People try to lift him up and give him special honor, but he won't accept it. He humbly turns the conversation to Christ. People try to stir up comparison and jealousy, but he won't have it. 
He rejoices in the ministry of Jesus and reminds people that Jesus is the Messiah. People try to focus on the success of the ministry based on the size of the crowd, but John is focused on the condition of the heart of those who are hearing in relation to Jesus. John tells us that Jesus must increase and he must decrease. He understood that it was good for him to become less visible and known and for people to see and know Jesus. This morning, I leave you and myself with three things to prayerfully reflect on from this passage. Is the message that we are sharing about Jesus Christ clear? Consider John chapter 3, 16 and 36. What is the message that we are sharing? In our lives and ministry, is the focus on Jesus or on ourselves and our success? And finally, ask the Lord, where has comparison crept in? And how can we celebrate others as we together bring the good news of Jesus Christ to this world? Thanks for listening. And tomorrow's reading, we move into chapter 4 of John, verses 1 through 26. God bless.